back to our fourth and final episode with Del Bigtree. Del, I think one of the, I don't know if it's the biggest issues that's coming out of this, but one of the huge issues that we're noticing, apart from all the medical questions, censorship, freedom of speech, all of that is being taken away. Now, uh, we've got the frontline doctors who were shut down because I think they had over 4 million views of their press conference out the front of the Supreme Court when they did the original press conference within 12 hours. I mean, that viewership is huge. They obviously- There's more had... than that, 17 million. Oh, 17, 17 million, million views. Yeah, 17 million views. So- In, in, in hours, yeah. And- Twitter was the last one, I believe, to shut the video down. But YouTube, Facebook, everybody jumped yeah. on that really quickly. Your show, The High Wire, which had a good viewership happening on YouTube, but I believe viewership started to swell sort of during this pandemic. You've been yes. shut down on YouTube. I know that yeah. when we did the episode about hydroxychloroquine, which was straight after the doctors had made their speech, I was shadow banned on all of my social media. My reach was essentially zero for at least two weeks. I mean, this is something we've never seen before. I have never seen anything like it. I think the week and, and that specifically that event, the frontline doctors summit in front of the Supreme Court, uh, in my mind is the greatest act of censorship I've seen certainly in my lifetime. It is historic in this country. It may have been one of the most successful videos at 17 million views in just a few hours before it got shut down. I mean, we could be depressed about these things. It is clearly happening. Uh, and I've been in the middle of this now for several years. What puts me in this discussion is my film, Vaxxed, from Cover Up Catastrophe, which follows the true story and confessions by a CDC whistleblower named Dr. William Thompson that provided 10,000 documents to back up his point uh, that they had committed scientific fraud on the MMR safety studies that they know it causes autism and they hid it from the people. Well, Vaxxed was, one, I think, arguably the most censored film in history, uh, certainly the most censored film in my lifetime. We got kicked out of Tribeca Film Festival, one of the leading festivals, because the pharmaceutical sponsors didn't want us there. There were bomb threats at theaters that tried to stop us from playing it. Australia, it was complete mayhem in every theater we wanted to play it. Two of uh, my co-producer, Polly Tommy, went to Australia, was kicked out of the country and had her visa uh, frozen so that she couldn't enter, I believe it was any Commonwealth country, all over a documentary that simply let parents tell their story and scientists that corroborate that story, along with a confession by one of the world's leading epidemiologists. So censorship around this issue is real. Here in America, then Adam Schiff reached out to um, all of the social media companies, Adam Schiff, uh, being a Democratic, I believe it's a congressman, might be a senator, I think it's a congressman. Anyway, he reached out and uh, said you need to take down any uh, Facebook pages or Instagram pages, YouTube pages that question the safety of vaccines. He also wrote to Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon, and said you need to take down any films that are on your platform that question vaccines. And the very next day, Vax was taken off of that platform. This is Nazi-style book burning. This is the same equivalent. When you remove things from the internet bookstores, when you remove things and the ability to free speech from the highway, our information highway, which is these social media platforms, you might as well be piling up the books in the middle of the road and saying, these books are too dangerous for you to read. They're too dangerous for you to look at. We need to burn them. We have a First Amendment right here in the United States of America that I don't believe you have in Australia. Our First Amendment right allows for free speech. I argue with my own family on this issue um, because, you know, they're very strongly supporting Adam Schiff and the Democratic Party. They appreciate the work that I'm doing. But, you know, I said to them, the First Amendment, I am being censored. My show was taken off of YouTube. My movie was taken down from uh, Amazon, breaking the contract we had to be free to all Amazon Prime members till the end of time. That is real censorship. That is the destruction of the First Amendment. And even my father said, I have to admit, and they were, they were you know, March in the 60s, hippies in the 60s. Those are my parents, very dynamic individuals. But they said, we've been enduring white supremacy our entire lives simply because we believe that's still a right to free speech. And as disgusting as it may be, 
We have to hold on to that right. Well, now that right is under assault here in America. You now have many politicians like Nancy Pelosi saying that we should not have the right to say whatever we want. There are certain videos that simply maybe portray her in a bad light that she tried to have taken off of YouTube. Those are scary, scary decisions. And it means we're slipping and sliding back into what we were supposed to have learned from the impressive societies like Nazi Germany or you know, under Stalin. These things, we've seen them before. And now it appears we're just going to let it happen again. I hope I'm wrong, but there's a lot of people that are very complacent on this issue. So, I mean, the, the, I guess the question becomes, if everything that you're saying is complete rubbish, why are they bothered by it? Let you talk and then they can discredit you with science. But that's not happening. Instead, they're shutting you down. The frontline doctors are being shut down. Now, when I Google you and Wikipedia comes up, you're just an anti-vaxxer. They, they don't give you a whole lot of credit right. for anything. And I was watching um, uh, your show from last week and you talked about how your Wikipedia page is actually locked. So you can't update the information, you can't change it. It's just the way it is. So there's the attack in terms of we're being silenced, but then also if you use Google to search hydroxychloroquine, or the vaccination or whatever, the results are very skewed. And yet if you use a different search engine that isn't owned by Google, the results that you get in terms of what's going on in Sweden is very, very different. So, I mean, when did, when did the attacks on you start and is there genuinely no way for you to change what's on Wikipedia? Is it correct? Is it incorrect? Right. So. I mean, I, rem I can remember back to uh, spring of 2015. At that moment, I was a top Emmy Award winning medical producer for the daytime talk show. The doctors celebrated by everybody that knew me, everybody that I worked for, everybody in the industry. So shortly after that, because I came upon a story that the world needed to see, a very real whistleblower inside of the CDC, that's when my censorship began. That's when articles started to come out, you know, defaming the position that I had or the science that I was using. I want to be clear, I am constantly being accused of spreading misinformation. However, my nonprofit, the Informed Consent Action Network, has a legal team that digs for the information. And when it is blocked from us, we sue. We have won now four lawsuits against government health agencies, the National Institute of Health, FDA, the CDC, and Health and Human Services. We're winning those lawsuits because we're telling the truth. And I say to anyone, if you think I'm spreading misinformation, then you should try winning lawsuits against the United States government agencies using misinformation. That's not possible. What the misinformation is, is that that's being aimed at me and lowered against me. I have no problem that people disagree with me. I have no problem that they state their opinion. That's fine. It's a free world. I'm open for any debate. You're allowed to make any statements about me, but I should be allowed to defend myself and make my statements freely also. I should also be allowed to go to my Wikipedia page and say it's not true that I'm an anti-vaxxer. In fact, I have covered issues on this show that had me attacked by anti-vaxxers because it looked as though I was supporting a vaccine. In particular, I had a great scientist that's using a BCG vaccine to cure type one diabetes. I am fascinated by that science. I go where the science leads. There are anti-vaxxers that attack me because I did that story. I am not adhering to anything. I am not anti anything. If I was, then I wouldn't believe in science because the truth about science is the science is never settled. And one of the few places in the world we hear the statements, the science is settled, is around vaccines. That's preposterous and it defies what we know about science. But you will see, as you say, anti-vaxxer Del Batri on my Wikipedia page, I am pro-science. And all I do is bring in peer-reviewed science. I don't cover a story or stand behind it unless I have multiple sources, which is how I was done, taught to do it for CBS. So the real lying is these fact checkers. The real lying is these supposedly open source uh, platforms like Wikipedia that aren't open source for me. They're controlled, edited, and then locked so that people get a story about me. It doesn't matter. I still have millions of people now tuning into the high wire and growing every single Thursday. 
Anyone that wants to see it, go to thehighwire.com. I think if you've listened to this interview, you can tell that I make a lot of sense. I'm doing my research, and I speak very freely about the things that I want to talk about, and that's the nature of someone that doesn't lie. It's really hard to lie. You have to understand, I do interviews like this six or seven times a week. If I was lying, it would be hard to hold that lie together. Someone would be able to pick it apart. You won't find anyone that can pick it apart. Try and find a quote that you don't agree with. I dare you. But you're going to be reading only attack pieces. But even in those attack pieces, I still take those interviews. I still talk to the New York Times. I still talk to uh, the Washington Post. I still talk to Slate or any other magazine that wants to interview me because I'm confident about what I'm talking about. And all I can, all I can do is continue to provide real-time, peer-reviewed science. So I don't care about the censorship. It's only making me bigger. It's only making people more curious. And in a world where there's still blood pumping through our brains and our veins, I think human beings are starting to see these fact-checking blocks and people being taken down as badges of honor. There must be something to what that person is saying, because as, if, as you said, if it was ridiculous, it would be easy to refute. If it was ridiculous, no one would care. It's not ridiculous. It's the truth. One of the, and, and I think, you know, when I look at my career over the last few years, what's ironic is I've been called anti-vaccine, anti-pharma, but I lost my YouTube page and will probably lose my Facebook page because I am promoting a pharmaceutical product called hydroxychloroquine. Why am I promoting it? Because I can only find scientists that are having success with it and none that aren't. Um, I've forgotten his name, but the director of or producer of um, Plandemic, Mickey, Mickey Willis, yes. This really made me laugh, and I think it's a funny thing to kind of end on. You promoted that you were speaking with him on the high wire, and was it on Facebook? It came up yes. as false information. Yeah, false information across a promotion where I said, this Thursday, I'll be talking to the director of Plandemic. What is the false information that Mickey Willis is not a living human being or that he's not going to appear on the show? I mean, this is how ridiculous this is getting, right? I guess what they're saying is the false information that's in the film that I'm not showing you, but is done by the man I am going to be interviewing. So it's a couple degrees away from what my video was about. I guess that's good enough. It's like minority report, right? Now we're being arrested for the suspicion that somewhere in the future there may be some misinformation. Uh, just, it's getting absurd. I just found that really funny when I was watching it. I thought, regardless of what side of this debate you land, that is the most ridiculous thing to censor someone on. You are speaking to him, end of story. Misinformation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and, but that's the world we live in, and that's why people are waking up. It is, it's getting comical. Uh, and I think there's real hope. I just want to leave people with hope. I think that this insanity is really waking up people uh, in an exponential way. And even reports, even mainstream reporters, I've been, I keep sharing a lot of the Sky News reports that are ha happening in Australia. There's a couple of reporters that seem to be willing to lose their careers and just jump ship that have been really laying out how insane the draconian measures are for the, the low level of infection and deaths that are happening in Australia. And they're pointing to Sweden, as I do virtually every week, saying, if Sweden could do it, why can't we? Where was their death rate? It's, it's on average. It's an average you know, death rate around the world, except they never locked down. They never wore face masks. And now they are partying, drinking, dining, in dance clubs, hugging, kissing, and there's no coronavirus left. How's that possible? We don't have a vaccine yet. Your, you know, the, there's news that's really bringing that to light in Australia. We'll see how long it lasts, but more and more people are waking up and more and more people are getting brave. I think this is the greatest mistake ever made by the WHO, uh, bad actors in China, and a couple of their influenced people like Tony Fauci around the world. I hope that one day all of these people, Bill Gates in there, will be tried for treason, perhaps crimes against humanity, for denying people a treatment that could have saved their lives. This is getting very real, and I, beyond just being a reporter, want to see justice. Justice must happen. That will be the next step after we win the hearts and minds of people to recognize that we were lied to. We are part of a giant, failing, failed experiment, and now we've got to stand up for our lives and rehire 
new leaders that are capable of critical thinking and not afraid to ask critical questions in critical times and come up with better decisions. Del, what a perfect place to leave it. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you very much. Take care.